Now, for our Friday panel is broadcaster Craig Foster and New South Wales One Nation leader Tanya Mihalik. Hello to you Hello. both. Happy Hi Friday. Guys. Yes, happy Friday, Friday. Yes. happy Friday. <laughs> now, look, let's start with Peter Dutton refusing to walk back his comparison of the response to the Port Arthur massacre to that pro-Palestine protest at the Sydney Opera House. Tanya, I feel as though what he was trying to say was that there was strong leadership from Howard during the time of that particular crisis. He faced the backlash over gun control uh, but still went ahead because morally he felt like it was the right thing to do. But what do you think? Do you think Dutton's comments were appropriate in this instance? I think the, um, there are elements of the media that have been very disingenuous in the way they've treated Dutton over this um, and indeed the Labor Party. Um, listening to those Labor ministers decide that somehow it's the opposition leader's fault. Mm, uh, that we, always. <laughs> and that it's uh, there's no fault, you know, uh, with the Prime Minister or, or anything that the Federal Labor Government's doing here. So <laughs> I, I remember that period, and I do remember really well that John Howard actually took a bipartisan approach. He worked with Kim Beasley, the then um, Labor leader. He worked with Cheryl Kerno, the leader of the Democrats. Yeah. He actually flew um, both of them together down to Tasmania um, to grieve um, with community, the community down there in Tasmania. So he took a bipartisan approach and he did take that leadership approach. Whether like him or, or not like him, yeah. he did. And I think the point that Peter Dutton has made or, and, and what he was really making, the point was that um, where's that leadership now? Correct. You know, October 9th, as... I remember where I was when, Port, when the Port Arthur ma massacre happened, mm. and I'm sure anyone who was young enough or old enough to remember yeah. will, be, will remember where they were on that day. Mm. There are people in Sydney now and in Australia and internationally that will remember where they were because of October 7th mm -hmm. and indeed because of October 9th mm. where we saw this pro-Palestinian rally yes. uh, go out of control yes. in Sydney. Uh, it was an international embarrassment and indeed something that required real leadership to, to come forth with from the uh, federal, uh, you know, federal prime minister yeah. and indeed from, from the New South Wales Premier. But we didn't get that level of leadership. No. They needed a, a really strong... Um, uh, it needed leadership coming from government to say that we can, will not tolerate that level of anti-Semitism in Australia, yeah. that we will not tolerate it. We know it's been brewing under the surface for, for a number of years, for years OK? Of yes. But it's certainly... Uh, what happened at the steps of Sydney Opera House is unacceptable. And I understand the point Peter Dutton is trying to make. He's, mm. he's, he's essentially saying um, Australians want to see leadership now. We want to see our communities united... Uh, yeah. Anthony Albanese has the opportunity to work with Peter Dutton now and with the broader, with all the parties, including One Nation and the many minor parties that exist in Parliament, to actually have a united front now and a united position Absolutely. on how to uh, go forward with this. Otherwise, even on the world scale, we just look... We just look, we look ridiculous. We, we look ridiculous. Absolutely. Uh, Craig, what did you think of Peter Dutton's comments this week? Um, I think that uh, there's two issues here. One is the racism that we all abhor um, and which we've been seeing on the rise actually for quite a few years now. We had a, a big rise during COVID as well and then um, against many, many communities and now, of course, anti-Semitism and also Islamophobia is also on the rise. Um, and so we all need to respond to that really aggressively, but that shouldn't be conflated with, you know, one of the worst moments in Australian history. The only thing I agree with Peter Dutton on this is that John Howard did an amazing job at that time, and that's absolutely for but sure. But that's the point he was making, Craig, in fairness. Well, you can make that without conflating the two issues, right? And, and what I... The only thing that I've liked out of it... And I, and, and is that, you know, Bridget Arja came out and, I, you know, we've talked about politicians within the same group who are prepared to come out and mm -hmm. talk, uh, uh, you know, based on their conscience and they disagree. I think mm -hmm. it's important on all sides mm -hmm. and we don't see enough of it. Um, and Jeremy Rockley from Tasmania, uh, you know, the Premier... Uh, he, the Liberal Premier, you know, he's also come out and said, look, it's completely inappropriate, as actually has at least one of the person who survived it. Um, so I think that, uh, you know, Peter Dutton should say, look, um, it was wrong conflating those two, but the point I'm making about John Howard's leadership, I stand by, and he should, because that was a genuine moment in Australian history when we saw someone um, actually bringing people together. Mm -hmm. um, and that we need that more than made, ever Peter. now. Yeah. That's what Peter made. That's the point he made, Craig. He didn't make the point of, of saying that one issue was more serious than the other or comparing it. I, I don't think that's what was being made. I think that's I think, how people took there, it. There that's certainly people, how I took it. it. And I thought it was, I thought it was really inappropriate. Like well, yeah. I, I think that 
what's happening is the Labor Party jumped on this too because they like to play uh, the That's man, politics. not the ball. Yeah, and, I get that. And, and there's yeah. a lot of politics I involved in this. Yeah. Ultimately, the point was that yeah. we're seeking leadership right now and we don't have that. Yeah. That's the point, yeah. I think. It's, look, it's a real tough one, uh, isn't it? Because, mm. I mean, that it's, it is separating different members of our... Uh, society, yeah, it's which, which, which is the hardest part yeah. um, out of all of this. But let's move on because more divisions have emerged within Labor over its, over its migration laws. Now, with the Labor for Refugees group, they're now arguing that provisions enshrining mandatory prison terms and undermining protections actually breach the ALP national platform. Now, Tanya, we know that a few weeks ago Labor desperately tried to rush this through Parliament within mm. 36 hours. They failed. It's now gone to a Senate committee. But it feels like Labor is now facing a real internal revolt over this. <laughs> yeah, the Labor Party will always have this problem because mm -hmm. uh, the Labor for Refugees is a uh, very big group within the union and Labor movement and they've got a, a, a lot of say in that party and they certainly have a lot of say uh, in pre-selections as well. So um, their members are members of the party and the branches and the structure within the party. Mm -hmm. So. It's interesting because uh, they're going to... This is an issue that we need to deal with desperately. OK, we've had a High Court decision last year. We know that we need to deal with this at, in, in Parliament. Um, legislation was brought that was totally a, a dishevelled response mm. in reality. When you're seeing the Greens and One Nation and everybody come together and say, look, we've got to go to an inquiry, you know mm. there's a problem. That's true. That doesn't mean there's a problem necessarily with <coughs> every part of that legislation. Right, so what, you would support that legislation? Well, I think you, I think you do need that le legislation. Right. And I think I think that they what they do need to do, the Labor Party and, and the ministers and the government, is actually sit down with the opposition, sit down with other parties in the Senate and try and, and, and sort out what can be yeah. supported through this Senate. Okay. Ultimately, it's at mm -hmm. that stage. It's going to the inquiry. It will come back for a vote yeah. in, in the Senate. Yeah, sure. which it will. Like, uh, and then, Craig, Great. do you think that these concerns put forward by Labor for Refugees is fair? Uh, yeah, I didn't agree with the bill, so I like yeah. anyone who's standing up against them. I don't care whether they're from Labor or otherwise. Mm -hmm. And I do think um, the fact that it's had to be... Uh, you know, this bill's had to be reverted to a... Uh, uh, an inquiry um, shows a democracy actually working in this respect. Mm. But I also think, as we said a few weeks ago, that, you know, the High Court has rules to apply and I always get worried in any respect, doesn't matter if it's around refugees or anything, where the government wants to take steps beyond that. Um, and that's what's applied here. Mm -hmm. So I think the conversation is a really important one about all of our immigration at the moment. Um, but, you know, let's, let's do it in this appropriate way, right? Let's yeah. have a, a sane conversation, which actually, happily, is now happening, <laughs> happening about this bill. Yeah, well, let's see. I mean, it's very rare you get the Greens and very the rare. party actually very team rare. up on something. Oh, so, <laughs> exactly. This is a rare, a rare moment. Uh, now, international students are set to be slugged with hugely more expensive non-refundable visa application fees as Labor tries to reduce migration levels. Australia already has the second most expensive visa application fees among the major student markets. Applicants pay $710 to apply for a student visa compared with, say, the equivalent of $345 in New mm. Zealand. Uh, Tanya, what do you think about this? Do you think that this is a fair move? We're trying to bring down that rate of migration. Is this the way mm. to do it? Well, 700,000 students is just way too much. Think about the impact on, on infrastructure, on housing, on hospitals. Well, we don't on, have the infrastructure. Uh, we don't. We don't. So you can only think about how, the impact. But I also think um, that, look, it's a competitive market. It's a cash cow for universities. Mm -hmm. They love having international students. It started off with 10%. It grew to 30%. It's 40%. Mm -hmm. It's something like almost 50% yeah. now, students. It's extraordinary how many mm. international students hold up universities. And mm. it's really unfair for students. The people I'm thinking of are the students in Australia, domestic yeah. students, yeah. Who, yeah. who are paying huge huge hex bills, yeah, so am okay? I. They're so stuck am I. in paying in hex bills. So am I. Still going. Um, and, uh, yeah, well done. Yeah, that, well, that's the issue. They're paying hex. That is the issue. Uh, yeah. But what about, um, you know, a, a slight increase in, in, in the fee for international students? Most of these international students can afford it, OK? Let's be yeah. very honest. They can afford it. They're not coming from poor families. They're actually coming from very wealthy families. Yeah. So they well, can afford always. it. Well, not always. No, they are because yeah. the international fees are uh, huge, OK? True. What they end up True. paying. What they actually end up paying the university, not yeah. what they pay. But that doesn't the mean they're wealthy families. Yeah. That means they well, somehow find the money. Well, but it's not our worry. My worry is the domestic students are having a tough time. So is mine. So I can... 
completely agree with you. I think um, the fact that you know, we had a, a great article on a few weeks ago saying that actually the, the petroleum resources rent tax, for example, that gas company, international gas companies pay is half of what our kids are paying on HEX. Yeah. Yeah. So if, if our starting position is that we want the most educated country in the world, mm. that's the only way to future-proof well, our next generation. We're making them broke, these kids. They, that's that's exactly why right. they can't get into So I'm housing. talking university and yeah. TAFE. I'm not talking yeah. only university. Then yeah. that has to be done. My question is, have we defunded universities and then put the load on them to then bring more international students mm. in order mm. to fund our university system? That's a big question for mm. us. And therefore, we, we have to look at that um, as part of, I think, an overall kind of review of the tax system. But ultimately, our university and our education for kids in Australia should be free. Yeah. You know, we are a resource-rich uh, country well, and yeah. it's not right that that's happening. So no. I agree You're that we should look at the fees. You're trying to kill off the resources uh, uh, sector, at Craig, in Australia. So I don't... Yeah. We yeah. might be rich in resources. We're not I mean, tapping into it. I mean, if we had free education, that would be... <laughs> we should I don't have it, right? I think that ship sailed. I think that ship sailed. To have, sailed. <laughs> to have a, an access to education. Yeah. Yeah. Now, look, this one's interesting because the president of the North Melbourne AFL Club, Dr Sonia Hood, she's quit social media after mm. copying abuse online for her playful, as it's been described, interaction with fans while the team struggles on the field. Hood regularly interacts with fans on X, despite the club being winless this year. Craig, yep. what, I mean, well, look, you know well as well as anyone that yeah. fans are very passionate about their clubs. Yeah. You would yeah. know from your, your, your own soccer days. Yeah, exactly. Uh, CEO, she chats to fans, she keeps the yeah. morale up. Do you think it was appropriate that she does this? Sure, it's appropriate she yeah. does it. Um, I mean, you know, you, you re reacting and responding and interacting with fans can be difficult, that's mm -hmm. for sure, but there has to be a line in the way that they also respond. Yes. And we see too much on social media, particularly around women and high-profile women, these yeah. what she has called gendered misogynistic yes. attacks, and they are, and they're easy to identify. Yeah. Because it's mm -hmm. like you should be somewhere or you should be back in the kitchen or, you know, get anything sure. or what, right? Um, and so that's absolutely wrong. And so I, every time we talk about these, I keep going back to just the broadly social media companies. I think we've got a big problem with it. We've got a oh, problem absolutely. with the algori algorithms. Mm -hmm. We've got a problem with what our kids are digesting every day. Yeah. We've got a problem with the next generation. I, I read something the other day about this next generation of kids just coming out of high school or just left uh, kind of the most lonely generation ever mm. and that they can't build relationships. And part yeah. of that is because they're obviously spending so much time on there. So we're starting now to get... A real understanding of what the impact is yeah and mm -hmm. i think australia should take the lead in relation to social media companies and say okay we need yeah. to sit down and talk about what this means and what these algorithms do to all of us yeah and well, it's a broader, get control it's a broader of it. problem yeah. right? and this but, is just part yeah, of it but yeah. i think you've got to look it's freedom of speech and, and i don't i don't think you should be stopping people from making the comments that they're making i think that's yeah. life i think yeah. that's what the social media is all about yes. and it's about giving people an opportunity to have their say yeah look in the end I think Dr. Sonia Hood, she's obviously unwell too. We've got to remember she was diagnosed last year with breast and cancer. And that's a fair point. That's probably, uh, uh, you know, she's probably having a hard time in general with her health. I think you've just got to not take things personally. I get attacked all the time yeah. when I make comments. Don't I make we all? Don't <laughs> we all get it. Right, you get attacked. <laughs> you've got to not take things personally. You've just yeah. got to just switch off and go, OK. I and mean, don't forget, these people are coming from anywhere around the world when they're writing That's comments. That's true. We don't, yeah. know, we don't know who and they are. You can't yeah. take it personally. No, you're, and, you're, look, and people are very you're, passionate you're, about sport, OK? Oh, they're very, very passionate about sport. Sure. Now, I'd like to get your views on this because this one sparked debate online. A photo of oh, this is great. Come on. picnic tables at a popular beach in Sydney. Well, it's gone by. Viral. Now, this was at Bronte Beach in the city's eastern mm. suburbs. There's a tablecloth and a backpack on each table. Can't table. happen. Don't do it. it. Get Don't out. Let no out. way. No, it's first in <laughs> but this That's is ridiculous. Come on. This is un-Australian. Now, every Aussie, all of your viewers, we've all been abroad. <laughs> so we've been to Fiji or we've been to Bali. Or been and the one people who hate when we see this, you know, yep. you come down in the morning and you're around the yeah, pool, no, right, and all of the things are taken. Ridiculous. And everyone's sitting in having breakfast. Yeah. And the Aussies always say, no, 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 no. We're not having that. Right? No, 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 it can't happen. It can't happen. No, it's someone ridiculous. has to sit there. If you want to get it early like yeah. that, you have to suffer. Yeah. I've done it. Yeah. Like every Christmas yeah. day yeah. down at Bondi for 20 years. For 20 years. We're there at 6 a.m. <laughs> right? And I have to sit there while everyone's sleeping. No, I don't completely do it. agree. Don't now, just really quickly, I want to ask you on this one, Tanya, yeah. because another case of cancel culture. Former Prime Minister John Howard has blasted the decision mm. to rename the Department of Health's headquarters from the serious building after public servants complained about the Colonial Association. Here oh, we go again. Look, I can't stand this. I know stuff. you're going to be really culture. upset it about is, this one. Craig, it is, and I agree <laughs> uh, with John Howard. And I agree. Yeah. It's, look, I haven't got.
got anything better to think about. The, yeah. It's the Department of Health. I would have thought they'd have right. far more pressing issues yeah. than worrying about renaming their building. Ridiculous. The costs associated yeah, with ridiculous. renaming their building. And yeah. anyway, aren't exactly. half of them already still working at home anyway? Well, that's so what they're, they're all working from home about? most of the time. What are they I mean, for goodness sake, Honestly. here we go again. Tanya Mahalik, Greg Foster, always a pleasure. Don't to put those towels down there. We're not having it. See you guys next week. Thank you.